Hey everybody, Johnny here. In this video, we're going to take a look at the new Raycast Geometry node that's been added to Blender 3.0 Alpha. Let's get into it. So here in this scene, I've got a cube with a Geometry node tree on it. And then I've got this larger object off to the side. I've brought this object into my node tree with an object info node. The next thing I'm going to do is add a Geometry Raycast node. The idea of the Raycast node is that your main geometry will be shooting out rays in a given direction. You give the node a target, and then if the rays hit that target, you can get information back about those rays. The mapping mode determines how attributes are going to be returned from the target object. We're not going to get into that real deep in this video. The next option is the ray direction. This is just to say, are we going to specify the ray direction using a vector, or are we going to use an attribute, much like many of our other geometry nodes? The ray length is how far the rays travel before they fail, and we can determine the ray length either with a float, like it is now, or an attribute if we want. We're going to stick with float, so these rays will go 100 meters before failing. The geometry input is our ray emitter, and the target geometry is, well, you probably guessed, the target. So I'm going to plug this wall in as my target geometry. The ray direction is which way the rays are going to be going out of our geometry object. So in this case, if I go into front view, you'll see that the wall is to the positive x of my cube. So I'm going to set my ray direction to 1 in the x direction and 0, 0 in the other two directions. And so now the rays are going in this direction. The next bit of setup is how we're going to use this ray information. The simplest one to talk about is the isHit attribute. So here I'm going to add an attribute name to my object under isHit. We'll call it hit. As you can see, my object now has a boolean hit attribute, and they're all marked as true. Now if I move this cube so it's partially above this wall, you'll see that the top four vertices no longer hit with their rays, but the bottom four still do. If I continue to move it up, now none of them do. I could of course use this to do all sorts of things. For instance, I could add a delete geometry node and have my selection be the hit attribute. I'm going to click invert, so now if the rays are hitting, the object will be there, and if they're not hitting, they're going to be deleted. So if I move this up again, you'll see that as soon as those vertices clear the top of the wall, they disappear. I'm going to go ahead and subdivide this cube so we can see even better. The next three attributes give us information about the hit itself. We can store the hit position, the hit normal, and the hit distance. So the hit position tells you where the hit occurred, the hit normal is the normal direction of the face that it hit, and the hit distance is how far the rays traveled before hitting the object. The last two attributes that I haven't mentioned yet go together. Those are the target attribute and the hit attribute. The target attribute is an attribute on the target geometry that you want to look for with your rays. In this case, I'm going to subdivide my wall and add a vertex group to it. Now I'm going to go ahead and weight paint on some values. That's good enough for now. The vertex group on the target is called group. So in my target attribute, I'm going to type in group. Now, whenever a ray from my source hits my target, it's going to look for that attribute called group, and whatever its value is at the hit point, it's going to place that in hit attribute. So I'm going to put here group weight. As you can see, our cube now has a column called group weight. This is the value of the vertex group on the wall where each individual ray has hit. So as I move this up to where the values were less, the group weight should decrease. And as I go past the top of the wall, you can see it goes to zero because it's no longer getting any values back. As a final example of something you can do with this node, I'm going to go ahead and instance this arrow on this source geometry. Now with that instance, I'm going to use the hit normal to determine the direction of these arrows. So I'm going to add in a point align rotation to vector node. You may have to tweak your object here so that the starting position is pointing at the object you want. So now I'm going to change the vector of this align rotation node to an attribute, and the attribute I'm going to choose is the hit normal. 
Now that I've done that, I'm going to find which axis gives me the results that I'm looking for. Now finally, if I move this object, as the rays come out and hit this curved surface, it's going to find the face normal of the face that it hits. And each arrow now is going to turn accordingly. Of course, this is just one thing that you can do with this node, and I'm sure you're going to be coming up with some great ideas of some things to try. So go ahead and download the Blender 3.0 alpha build off of builder.blender.org and check this out. I hope it inspires you to make something awesome. If you're enjoying the channel, make sure to hit subscribe, and I really appreciate you taking time out of your day to watch this video. So until next time, I'll catch you later.